I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks. We're building this 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. At the end of August, we dropped our daughter off for her first year of college in St. Augustine, Florida, and we headed back home. Little did I know that Hurricane Dorian would then make its appearance, so I had to drive back down to Florida to get her. We moved inland to Georgia for a few days. The hurricane stalled out, and I was down there for a week. We eventually moved our way back into uh, Jacksonville, where the edge of Dorian skirted that town, and we saw that go by, and we were eventually able to get her back to her dorm room, and then I could head back home so we could get back to work on the boat. By the time move-in was complete and the hurricane had passed, I had lost two weeks. And when I arrived home, I realized that winter was quickly approaching and we still had a ton of epoxy work to do. I put the various coating processes for parts of the tank on the back burner and just went full in on all sorts of epoxy work. And that also included doing some painting with some epoxy paint. The parts of the boat with the greatest curves on the chine, which were near the bow and the transom, we used a technique called spiling to cut the lamination pieces to shape before we installed them. Otherwise, we would have had to use some significant muscle to try to bend them into position. And this really is the most accurate way to do it.
Obviously, we'll have a lot more screws to install, but since this is the most severe bend in the whole chime lamination, I just wanted to get some screws in here to help reinforce the whole assembly. And, you know, obviously, we'll put a couple screws in the field, then in each frame, and down the line it'll go. And you may have noticed something different in our boat project that you've seen in other wooden boat building project, and that's our use of galvanized fasteners, and we've used them throughout, from our bolts to our keel bolts, and now to the screws that we're using. And the reason for that is principally because of our design philosophy, and that is we are building a safe and comfortable cruising home for our lifetimes. After that, we really don't worry about what happens to this boat. We're not worried about resale value. We're not worried about getting our money back out of this when uh, we're done with our cruising lifestyle. What we hope will happen is that somebody will get a really good deal on hopefully what will be a really well-built boat and will continue on with their cruising life. But we're not worried about the money um, getting it on the back end but we are worried about the money on the front, and those are the building costs. And galvanized fasteners are three to four times cheaper than what the ideal material is being silicon bronze. And um, while silicon bronze is an excellent material, extremely corrosion resistant, uh, very strong, not quite as strong as steel, but uh, still plenty strong, it's a great material, but they're very expensive. Uh, so we have gone with galvanized fasteners and galvanization process is simply taking regular steel or any various grades of steel and it gets dipped in a molten bath of zinc and some other chemicals and for fasteners with threads they get put in a centrifuge and spun to clear the threads and the driver assembly and then left to cool and that zinc layer hardens on the steel surface and provides a barrier to keep corrosion from occurring in the steel. Now the other difference that you may be seeing is the look of the screws themselves. These are cut thread wood screws and that's what we're using and that is what is typically used in boat building projects. And they look a little bit different than what you see typically at the big box stores from uh, like a deck screw or a construction screw which is a rolled thread uh, wood screw. And a rolled thread screw is essentially a solid piece of wire stock and it's put through a mold, like an extrusion. And that creates the threads and any other features that may be on the screw. Um, but what happens is it leaves the threads a wider diameter than the shaft of the screw. So we have a little bit less shear force, but it's a lot cheaper to make and a lot faster to make these rolled thread screws. Cut thread wood screws are taken from a similar wire stock, but instead they're turned, uh, it's easy to picture it by thinking of them being turned on a lathe where material is removed from the screw and that leaves the threads the same diameter as the shaft. So when we go for installation and we use the proper bit, which is a tapered bit to match the tapered thread of our cut thread wood screw, you can see it's narrower here than at the, the head, when properly installed, the shaft of the cut thread screw will seal the hole that was drilled by the drill bit, creating a watertight barrier in theory. Now, when you come back and you install either a bung or a mixture of epoxy and sawdust and just fill that hole, you make for a very watertight assembly for a long, long time. And for every horror story you hear about a uh, galvanized fastened boat, I'll show you a story about a galvanized fastened boat that lasted 100 years. A lot of that comes down to how the galvanization process took place, how it was done, and the installation process. Was it installed properly? And those go hand in hand for adding to a nice long life for galvanized fasteners. Now, a third material you might hear a lot about is stainless steel, and a lot of people think stainless steel, it's uh, a complete umbrella material, and it's perpetual, never-ending, never-failing, and that's just not true. Um, stainless steel comes in several different grades. Only a few really should be used on boats, and no grade of stainless steel should be used below the waterline for fasteners. Now, Stainless steel still suffers from corrosion. It's called crevice corrosion. And it occurs in an oxygen deprived environment like below the water line where a, gal or excuse me, a stainless steel fastener is installed in a piece of wood below the water line. And whereas uh, when a galvanized fastener starts to fail, you'll see those telltale black lines coming down the side of the boat. There really isn't much of a warning sign for stainless steel fasteners until there's a catastrophic failure like a plank flying off and that's because it's happening below the surface where you can't see it. So um, stainless steel, while it certainly 
it has a place above the water line it shouldn't be used below the water line and then even above the water line you have to be cognizant of what you're actually getting because you know I'm not here to disparage any country but there's a lot of things that come out of various countries that are not what they say they are and the only way I would use one of those special grades of stainless steel and we are using some 316 stainless staples in our diesel tanks um, would be that uh, if I could trust the manufacturer of them and I could trust the retail location I purchased them from something like Jamestown where I knew that they were going to give me what they say they're giving me because for the average person I'm not going to be able to tell the difference between 316 and 305 or any of the other varieties of stainless steel you know some are more magnetic and less magnetic well you know how does that feel what's more magnetic I have no way of knowing so you just need to be cautious when using stainless because it's not a magnet magic material and it does have its weaknesses so it's just something to be aware of if you're thinking about doing a similar project. There's really not that many hard and fast rules when it comes to screw and material selection uh, besides uh, drywall screws are only for drywall but everybody has their own decision to make and every boat is a compromise and this was the compromise that we made for our vessel and I know that's probably more information that you wanted or needed about screws or screw materials but I thought it was about time we talked about it so let's go over to the other side where we have our third layer on there as well and more screws to install just like we did here. Of course there's inevitable downtime while things are drying or while things are in clamps so we moved back into the shop where we still had warm temperatures and continued work on our water tanks. We needed to cut our end wall pieces and install them, add uh, additional fiberglass tape and epoxy to those joints. We also built our frame pieces, uh, part of our frame pieces that will make up the side walls and install them. The purpose of the white oak frame inside each tank is to keep that tank from twisting or sagging at any time when you're under those difficult conditions a boat's going to find itself. The white oak frame also gives us a very secure nailing surface. Plywood takes fasteners great across the grain, but in this situation where we'll be installing using the edge grain, fasteners really don't take well to the edge of plywood. So by backing everything up with these white oak frames, we know that besides just the epoxy, mechanical fasteners will be providing a lot of support too.
Everything will get layered and coated with epoxy and fiberglass tape. We used a generous amount of uh, Thixo pre-thickened epoxy to help soften those inside corners. And all in all, it went pretty well. I'm always trying to work smarter, so I wanted to get a coating of bilge paint on areas that would become inaccessible once we started planking. And we're using a Total Boat product called Total Protect. It's a barrier coat and a primer. Uh, we'll follow up with a bilge paint from Total Boat. Uh, it's called Total Bilge. And it's an epoxy based paint. I was very happy with uh, how easy it was to work with. It had a long pot life and dried pretty quick once it was on the surface. I'm one of those weird guys who enjoys painting, so it was a pretty good day. Of course, work in the engine room continued and then involved installing some of the panels that we made up earlier. We used an unthickened coat of epoxy on both surfaces, followed by some thickened epoxy just to make sure there weren't any voids. And we secured it in position with some clamps and some stainless steel 316 stainless steel staples from our pneumatic stapler. With those in position, then we could take measurements to make our templates for the sidewalls. Since the sidewalls are so oddly shaped, using templates is the most accurate way to get a perfect fit. good uh, a little bit of sanding it looks like on the front and that will get everything uh, lined up just perfect but otherwise this is the process epoxy 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 
finish up our chine and finish up our build stringers, keep working in our engine room here, applying paint when we can, and it's a round robin of, you know, while one thing's drying in clamps, we'll just move on to the next thing, and on and on it'll go. Uh, we've got to get this epoxy work done before winter sets in. We want to be planking by this fall and definitely by this winter, so we've got to get this epoxy work done. Now, we hope you go check out our website at www.cjrproject.com where you can learn about all the steps we've taken to get to this point in the build. We hope you'll check out our social media sites. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like those pages so you can follow along as we work in real time. Uh, we hope you'll check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown has been a big supporter of ours and we're very grateful for that. And we hope our viewers will help support companies that support the Sea Dreamer Project. So please go check them out. We hope you check out our merchandise store and help support the project yourself. And of course your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.